Dear ladies and gentlemen, it's quite difficult to uh, be the last presenter within the session. It's good on the one hand. On the other hand, I suppose uh, there is not no audience left. But on the other hand, you can actually speak about and uh, everything that uh, you, uh, you speak about everything you think about. So let's talk about how a human being actually. Um, uh, you started using sails. You can see that about 30 years, uh, 3,000 years ago, they started using sails uh, on a regular basis, and actually they uh, discovered the world ocean. Trastuzumab can be compared to this at the end of the uh, previous century. In fact, it changed the uh, strategy of heart to positive uh, cancers, and uh, most probably we started uh, thinking about combating this disease. With the open of the targeted treatment, uh, we actually started a new era. In a, a number of um, years, the Greeks learned from the Phoenicians uh, to, uh, s uh, to just build vessels. And uh, the area of their coverage actually was from the Mediterranean, was the Mediterranean, the Black Sea, and the Aegean Sea of the Asia. And uh, generally speaking, they combined all the uh, sails with the, uh, with um, uh, with oars, and uh, this is uh, pretty much the same that we are doing currently. So generally speaking, uh, this is uh, the combination of chemotherapy being the oars and also the targeted uh, th immune therapy, uh, such uh, being the sails. Век моря бы разделили только суда с одной мачтой и одним парусом на этой мачте. Мы видим гнезийский гог, европейское средневековое одномачтовое судно с крепким корпусом. Основное торговое военное судно Союза гнезийских городов. Это были, наверное, самые известные моряки того времени. Но парусная революция 15 века гнезийцев откинула назад с развитием технологий Мы видим корабль английского мореплавателя Фрэнсиса Дрейка, где мы видим уже очень много мачт и корабль. Джорджа Кука, Эндевор, где мы видим четыре мачты украшенные. Джордж и Джордж Кук, это Эндевор. И стандарт для лечения HER2 позитивного мочевого кожного инфаркта, который, опять же, есть в нашей среде, они говорят о использовании дуал-таргетного блокировки и дуал-сейл, который мы используем, чтобы лечить HER2 позитивного мочевого кожного кожного. Right here, it's the and pertuzumab. The indications is the size of the tumor node above two centimeters and or uh, lesion of regional lymph nodes. Uh, and we can say today that now adivan therapy of HER2 positive breast cancer uh, is a two cells in, combina in combination of uh, two cells in combination with chemotherapy, which provides us very good, uh, extraordinary results, uh, up to 70% of complete uh, pathological regress, uh, regression. It's a great uh, result in treatment of our patients. What uh, uh, and also uh, we know that uh, situation started to, to change when previously we said that the hair to positive cancer is uh, uh, cycle should be used then today until cycle uh, we uh, can uh, stop using one cycle in this group of patients we don't need uh, those sort of say pedals anymore and the ASCO study uh, of 2020 shows the uh, overall survival of breast cancer patients in presence of absence of anticycles in their treatment regimens uh, has no effect on overall survival uh, the, which uh, parameter for oncology is not always the one which we can somehow uh, which we can somehow to uh, change. Overall survival usually more or less uh, uh, permanent. So the use of combination of drugs of dual target uh, therapy makes possible to get rid of anticycline neodivant uh, chemotherapy uh, with uh, uh, along with less toxic therapy. So can we use only cells without uh, no pedals at all? And uh, there are still uh, studies which shows the success of uh, uh, dual uh, blockade in patients uh, with uh, HER2-positive uh, breast cancer. Thank you.
in the audio therapy is the most interesting. The study of 2018 shows 45% of complete morphological regression in patients without chemotherapy with also double blockade. In this case, they used uh, trastuzumab and lopatinib. Of course, it's a separate of a uh, specific group of patients with enriched HER2 status. Of course, this is a trial which has no clinical uh, use for clinical practice, but uh, nevertheless, we can say that the sales can exist without uh, pedals, and uh, and there is a group of patients with HER2 positive uh, breast cancer where we can uh, avoid use of neodivant chemotherapy, applying uh, target therapy only. But nevertheless, development of uh, cell fleet continued, and thus appeared uh, lots of carvalas, uh, carvalas, carax, uh, linen ships, uh, uh, corvage, uh, uh, and others. They are shown in this slide. Uh, and all this type of uh, ships has different tasks. Uh, mm, and so combination of uh, uh, target agents, uh, targeted agents and uh, targeted agents per se uh, means different effects and their combinations should be used, so to say, smartly. In this case, we could we could, should talk about modern uh, IV-1 therapy in HER2 positive breast cancer. We can divide patients on the, some on subgroup. We can talk about the subgroup of patients with or without complete regression, with uh, initial large size of tumor node, with impaired original lymph nodes, and presence of uh, uh, expression of estrogen or pro progesterone expression. In IV-1 uh, treatments, we can use antracycline free regimens. Uh, this was shown with this trial, and in patients with a small size of the primary tumor, without uh, uh, lesions in lymph nodes, uh, the antracycline-free regimen showed to be uh, quite um, uh, should be should be quite promising, especially if tumor size is less than three centimeters. The overall seven uh, uh, PFS uh, was uh, 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 quite high. Uh, double anti to blockade in uh, nativot mode in case of uh, uh, lymph node involvement is one of the potential treatment approaches which was shown studied in affinity trial, which shows that in patients with negative status of estrogen pressing receptors uh, with N2 status, the use of dual blockade in adivot mode is an option which should be uh, used. Of course, uh, there are uh, uh, of course, there are lots of uh, shooters, and the TDM1 is a drug uh, was studied in adjuvant mode in primary patients. Uh, this drug didn't show improvement of overall and relapse free survival, but maybe we uh, uh, the drug groups were not properly chosen, or we didn't take into account the toxicity problem. If I TDM1 in adjuvant mode without primary uh, mode, as adjuvant is not an option, maybe it could turn be like that if the a group, a patient group is properly chosen. So, more than anyone said, people have to positive breast cancer in primary patients who underwent surgery apply, uh, uh, so to say, uh, imply three options. The tumor above five millimeters up to three centimeters without lymph node in involvement is trastuzumab plus polytaxel. Tumor above three centimeters uh, involving N1 or without that is anthracycline plus taxane uh, plus trastuzumab. And the patients with poor prognosis is category N2 and, and negative uh, hormonal receptors is ID1 chemotherapy, trastuzumab, and pertuzumab, meaning a double blockade. But if we talk about the ships and uh, sail, uh, sail, uh, uh, sail ships, we should also should talk about the pirates. And from my point of view, it's my own opinion, it's a kind of an error. Why now ID1 therapy has never been uh, tested in HER2 positive patients if the tumor is above? Of three centimeters, and if lymph nodes are involved, it means you, either your diagnostic service is bad or there is something wrong with your kingdom. So, residual tumor after neod one chemotherapy. And in this case, TDM1 shows uh, a great results. Uh, in case of residual tumor in adjuvant mode, TDM1 uh, shows it's uh, has its good place, and this uh, type of treatment actually is uh, quite mm, good results. So talking about the uh, modern divine therapy of HER2 positive breast cancer in patients who were, uh, who were provided with divine therapy with uh, mandatory uh, dual blockade, meaning testuzumab plus pertuzumab, then after the surgery with full tumor regression, target therapy of testuzumab should be continued. In case of residual tumor, there should be adjuvant therapy using TDM1.
Корабли развивались дальше. Nonetheless, the ships continued their development, and there appeared a lot of options. There appeared uh, novelties, so to say, absolutely new words. So, uh, if we speak about the rangout, then everything is about the, uh, the that is related to the wood, and tackleage is something about the ropes. Um, generally speaking, um, and now you can see so many words which were all related to the um, uh, flag uh, flagships of the 17th. Uh, century. Just imagine how many words they needed to learn by heart. These are just uh, several combinations of uh, wood and ropes. I suppose that the contemporary study in the signal pathways, especially the immune markers, in the Catherine study, which is quoted here, it resembles the absolutely new uh, vocabulary that was uh, learned by the marine people then at those times. And we are just trying to adjust all these to the standard therapy. As a matter of fact, it must be P3K, uh, PDL, uh, HL, uh, P positive uh, breast cancer. But we don't use it that much because the an, a signal pathway analysis of the immune markers uh, in the Catherine, uh, PIC uh, 3CA, does not have any prognostic value despite the fact that they were studied in depth. The expression of the HER2 high or low grade doesn't have any prog uh, prognostic value in the T. Uh, DM1 therapy. The signal pathways that are studied at the moment, they do not give us any uh, significant results in our routine clinical practice. That is why, in the absence of the well studied signal pathways, we have the only thing uh, that we have to stick to is actually a call for by uh, the uh, ship master, like it was demonstrated in one of the, uh, the films. But if there is a complete uh, uh, if there is no wind in the sea at all, but, and we have the sails. Uh, this is a different uh, chemotherapy with the dual blo block. Thus, we achieve the full pathomorphological regression. And uh, generally speaking, this is not um, the contemporary treatment of breast cancer. Tell us about the fact that we, uh, there is no response to treatment, but 70% that they get cured. and. Uh, 30% are progressed, and uh, if there is response, 90% are cured and 10% progress. That's why, and uh, thus, we get in an awful situation where the contemporary treatment modalities do not cover all the breast cancer, and quite a big percentage, the 40%, they're outside of the... Uh, they are outside of the, so to say, routine path uh, or routine um, treatment. 20% of early cancers, of her positive cancers, will progress despite treatment. And this is something that we usually miss in our uh, presentations. And generally speaking, there is a question about resistance. Maybe the absence of wind is, res is a result of resistance or vice versa. Maybe the reason of the resistance are the molecular subtypes of the her positive cancers. Uh, maybe what we consider to be her positive is not always her uh, positive per se. Maybe uh, after no antivent treatment, the majority of residual treatment are luminal uh, subtypes, and the her positive becomes luminal. Maybe these particular cells are, uh, are they indeed a luminal uh, cancer? In San Antonio, back in 2018, there were brilliant results pu published. The molecular genetic uh, characteristics, for example, in the preclinical models. There are targeted therapy, and the um, tumor became luminal A after 70 uh, after 70 hours of the uh, treatment absence, they turned into her uh, positive again. So the victory over such uh, tumor and turning it or converting it into luminal A, it's a mistake. And they have two positive receptors. They are just like a phoenix uh, that will reappear from the ashes again. So 
maybe that is why we need to continue the targeted treatment when we speak about the uh, full pathomorphological regression and if we speak about the targeted treatment despite progression in uh, uh, line one two and three we uh, continue actually uh, the targeted treatment and actually uh, the sales they always depend on the weather. Actually, we stopped using sails not because uh, we uh, stopped, we just, uh, the wind stopped blowing, because, but because we invented the engine. And uh, the uh, Rangout and Takelaj, these are the terms that we look up in the Wikipedia and we don't know actually what these terms mean. Most probably the new engine in the future will virtually change our vision of the breast cancer. I suppose that the predecessor of the engine changing is the um, steam and the frigate Vladimir where there were sails and first steam engine, which were just so funny and uh, they produced a lot of uh, steam and smoke. But most probably immune therapy in combination with targeted treatment will probably the transition, just the same flagship, which will change our vision over treating patients with HER2 positive. Of course, the results are far from being ideal, but this is a new direction, new movement, which will probably give us a chance to uh, make other steps. Whether the sails are still used, yes, of course they are. And we do understand that the sailboats are still very uh, beautiful. And uh, the most, I suppose, beautiful is something that happened this year, uh, the metastatic um, disease Cleopatra. Uh, trial in Lancet in the March this year, there appears an article whether HER2 positive uh, breast cancer is uh, an incurable event. No, an incurable event. No, it is not. 37% of patients over one third are still alive. So the sailboats will still be used, and they're still very actual. Apart from that, they're very uh, important because the scarlet sales um, holiday is in, uh, just uh, something that will happen in St. Petersburg in the nearest future. This is a beautiful tradition of the city. And also, I should speak about the HER2 uh, positive uh, breast cancer. It's a very neatly organized on this slide. I suppose that the algorithm uh, which is uh, simple and clinically applicable. So let's move forward without changing our course, uh, changing our dest uh, the destination. And uh, of course, we should be speaking about the pirates. Pirates, they always change their opinion and change their mind. And I suppose that tomorrow things will change uh, her, uh, to positive uh, breast cancer. The first, uh, just, um, uh, first acquaintance with this disease is toxins plus dual targeted therapy. Uh, success, trastuzumab plus hormone therapy. Fiasco is TDM. And this is not only about neoadjuvant, but adjuvant. It's also about the metastatic breast cancer as well. Because as far as I see it, in the systemic approaches, we are somewhat deceitful. Because in the, uh, when in the very beginning, in the locally advanced, uh, the, most probably this is just her positive uh, breast cancer, which requires standard approaches and the, disregarding the stage of disease. Thank you for your attention.